In this video, I'm going to quickly cover how to create an animation that looks a little bit like this. Uh, you, now, you probably won't be able to hear the audio, but uh, know that I am animating this in time with music. It looks pretty good, and it's very simple to accomplish. Start in a new Cinema 4D project. And let's start by adjusting our output settings so that our uh, render, so that our viewport matches what our render is going to look like. So go into your render settings and click on your output tab. Change your preset from 320 by 240 to film video NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel. If you want to render out at full HD, go ahead and do that, but uh, I don't have the patience. Also change your frame range from current frame to all frames. Next, you're going to need to download a sound loop. Uh, earlier versions of Cinema 4D are pretty picky about the, uh, the audio format. Uh, let me just see if I can, but basically it should be a wave, I believe at 44.1 kilohertz. You can find the file I'm using at this bit.ly address. Once you have that file downloaded, in Cinema 4D, go ahead and add a MoGraph sound effector. The sound effector allows you to load in a sound file and use the differences in uh, frequency to affect the movement of your objects. So in my sound file field right here, I'm going to load in that file that I just downloaded. And now when I press play, I can watch my audio uh, update right here. Now there's a chance that you can't see this in real time. So to update your preferences, go to Edit, Preferences. And on the Common tab, you want to ensure that you have Real-Time Spinner and Real-Time Manager Update during animation both activated. Now to hear your audio, you want to turn on this sound setting right here. Now for those of you working in R13, uh, you won't need to turn this on, it's on by default. So you can now see and hear your sound. The clip that I'm using is only about two seconds long, so I'm going to adjust the final output of my animation to be 60 frames instead of 90. So my final output right here I'm going to set to 60, and now I'm just going to be looping through that animation. Well, this is all uh, pretty good. I've got a sound file loaded and I can hear it. The problem is that it's not affecting my objects just yet. So to do that very simply, I'm going to add a cube to my scene and I'm going to clone it. So once I've got this cube added, I'm going to change the size to 50, 50, 50. So it's a little bit more manageable. And I'm going to turn on a fillet to round the corners just ever so slightly. The default radius of 25 is way too high, so I'm going to set it to 3. And I get something that looks like this. Maybe even I'll go down to as low as 1.5. Next, I want to create a few copies of this cube in a circle. And I'm going to do that by adding a MoGraph cloner object. So go to MoGraph, choose a cloner. I'm then going to drag my cube inside of my cloner object. I get three linear clones like this. What I really want is a circle. So I'm going to change my cloner object settings. Go to your cloner object and change the mode from linear to radial. Once you've done that, change the plane from XY, which is the front view, to ZX, which is our flat view. Or rather XZ. So change plane to XZ and increase your radius uh, for me, it's going to be a value around 400. And increase your count. Uh, I'm just kind of going by look. It's not terribly important exactly uh, which settings you're using. Next, I'm going to add a floor object, which I can get by going to 
a view right here, pressing and holding on my light, and choosing floor. And I now get something that looks like this. They start out fairly low to the ground, and they'll eventually scale up. And the scaling is going to be controlled by that sound effector. Now to have my sound effector affect these clones, what I need to do is go into my cloner object and go into its effectors list. Right now it's empty. I want to drag my sound effector into that effectors list. So now when I press play, I notice that all of my objects are popping up and down with my music. I'm going to change some settings here so they all come so they all operate individually. So click on your sound effector and change the parameter, excuse me, the uh, effector mode here from apply mode all, which affects all clones simultaneously, to step, which affects them one after the other. So now there's a correspondence between this graph right here and each of these clones. This peak right here, we can see in these clones right here. This is the peak, and this is the far right side over there. So now, as this is animating, we can see an effect on our clones. Now, only a few of our clones are really being moved in any considerable way. So let's adjust our compression settings to scale up our graph. So now we've got a greater effect in uh, different places. It's a little intense, it's a little bit noisy. Um, and you can also come in and use this filter here, uh, but I don't have a lot of time to go into this, uh, to adjust uh, the heights of your graph and try and get it looking a little bit more even. A good technique is to find a graph where you've got a lot of visual information. For me, that's around frame 45. And then use this spline to try and equalize some of this. You can also control how much of your graph you're looking at. What I'm seeing is there's really only frequency information for this first couple thirds. So I can turn on Use Filter and adjust my bandwidth to adjust which portion of my graph I'm actually paying attention to. So I'm just going to increase this number until this purple section covers uh, everything that I see here. So now when I press play, I'm getting much more effect over all of my clones. The next thing I'm going to do is change the parameter that's being affected. Right now it's the Y position. And what I want to do instead is have it adjust the Y scale. So I'm going to the parameter setting. I'm turning on scale. And I'm going to set size.y to 10. I get something like this. Let's see what happens at 20. Now I'm, I'm using sort of a dirty trick, which is that uh, my cube is scaling from its middle, and half of it is submerged below the surface. But that's fine. Uh, I just didn't want to go through the trouble of moving the axis. I now have something that looks like this, which is pretty good. Next up, I want to uh, improve the look of this, uh, especially the motion. So I'm going to select my cloner object. And I'm going to add what's called a delay effector to take some of the, uh, the really huge swings out of this. So go to MoGraph Delay Effector. The default setting should be fine. And now as I play back, it's only those really big movements that show up. And the rest is smoothed out a bit. Next up, I want to improve the look of this uh, visually. And I'm going to do that with uh, some shaders and a simple ambient occlusion lighting setup. So first up, I am going to create a new material. I'm going to call this uh, BG for background. And I'm going to apply that material to my floor. I'm also going to add a sky object to my scene and apply that material to my sky as well. When I render, they are this sort of default gray color. Uh, I'm going to choose something uh, in the light blue uh, range. So now when I render, I get this. Next, I'm going to create a shader for my uh, bars right here. So I'm going to go File, New Material, 
and I'm going to name this material uh, bars. That's fine. And I'm going to give it sort of an orange color. Nice, light, middle orange. And I'm going to apply that not to my cloner object, but to my clone itself, my cube. Uh, and this is going to be somewhat important later when I'm using uh, a specific shader. Uh, for now, just take my word for it. You should have it on the cube itself. Next up, I'm going to add in ambient illumination, which I can accomplish by adding a single light to my scene, clicking on that light, and turning on the ambient illumination setting. So now when I render, I get a very flat looking scene. I can add in some shading now by adding in the ambient occlusion effect. So click on your render settings, choose effect, ambient occlusion. You're going to experience a pretty significant render hit, but I feel like the, uh, the end result is worth it. Next up, I'm going to randomize the colors of my clones. Uh, and just so you can see this effect more easily, I'm going to temporarily delete the shader that is on my cube. So click on your cube, delete that texture. Click on your cloner object again, and then go to MoGraph Random Effector. Now the Random Effector right now has shifted the position of these blocks randomly. And what I wanted to do is not change the position of the blocks, but I want to change the color. In my Random Effector, I have some parameters I can adjust. I'm going to turn off position. And I'm going to change color mode from off to on. So now when I render, I get this very colorful looking scene. Uh, but for my tastes, it's a bit too colorful. I'm going to now drag my bars material back on my cube, give it another render. Unfortunately, I've just lost all of those colors. So what I want is to somehow split the difference. And I can do that by going into my bars texture going to my color tab, and loading in a specific shader. So click on this triangle here, and go to MoGraph Color Shader. What this does is it pipes in the color that uh, my cloner object is getting from the random effector into my shader. Right now, its mix strength is 100%, so it's completely overriding my orange, so I get this. But if I lower my mix strength down to something like 25% and render, I get a nice blending of those random colors with my base orange color. If I go with something like 10%, I get a very nice monochromatic color scheme with slight variations. I'm going to just make this a little bit more intense of an orange and crank this up to about 20. I've now got uh, something that looks like this. Looks pretty good if you ask me. And uh, if I was really uh, concerned, I would come back and adjust my, my color settings for my background as well. Uh, last up, I'm going to do a simple camera animation where I'm going to push in. So I'm going to start by moving my camera back, get my initial framing. Then I'm going to add a camera object to my scene. I'm going to make that camera my active camera by clicking on this icon to its right. And then I'm going to go to frame zero and press record. Next, I'm going to go to frame 60, dolly in, maybe adjust my camera angle slightly, press record again. And now when I press play, I get my animation like this. If I want to save this out, I just go into my render settings on the save tab. I'm going to change the name of this to the name of my file, which is currently untitled 3. You should pick a better name than that. Uh, and I'm going to change my file format from TIFF to QuickTime Movie. Next, if I press my middle render button right here, it's going to render out my animation. And uh, that's basically it. And in the end, you're going to get something that looks, again, like this. Simple, easy way of using a sound to drive your animation.